open. So the first chapter I opened was Revelation chapter 3, verse number 8. It says, I have set an open door before you, and no one can close it. Amen. This is me, and I'm telling you that if you put your trust in God, your troubles are too small for the Lord. All of us gathered here, if we put our troubles together, it's still too small for the Lord. Let me just fast forward it. Finally, I was sentenced to death by hanging. After 16 months on remand. And everybody knew that the end had come. Friends had run away. Families had given up, except those who were very close to me. I was taken to his home. I was handcuffed behind me as I was being driven. And the most uncomfortable thing is that when you are handcuffed at your back and your nose starts to scratch and itch, how do you scratch your nose? And as I sat in the car, the devil kept saying that this is the end of your life. I got to his house and I kept on praying, kept on believing. The prison ministry kept visiting. Before that, Deeper Life Ministry used to come to James Fort and they started teaching us Bible. They were there and I'm proud to say that Pastor Bona is here with us tonight. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Bona. He's one of the people that used to come into the prisons and teach us Bible. So when I got there, they continued to come to the condemned cells. The Presby ministry were coming and ministering to us, Professor Haiti. Reverend Chris Hesse, Dr. Hesse, and many, many, many more. I remember Madame used to come to the prison. So let's put our hands together for the prison. And I believe many, many women on Christmas time will come and bring food to the condemned prisoners. And that was our source of hope. That was our source of hope. Everybody had written us off because when you are condemned, when a car is condemned, that car cannot come back on the road. Hallelujah. But you see, Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> so I kept encouraging myself in the Lord that I will not die here. But the Lord will deliver me. So that I will go and be a witness unto his goodness. So seven years into my 14 years, I was pardoned from death to life. Amen. 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 And it took the doing of the Lord. But you see, when you are a lifer, you are still standing at the same place because you have no day of discharge. In prison, there is a terminology that says every day minus one. Let's go very quickly to the food that we eat in the prisons. You forget about this. This is example, right? Stay there. This is zontuli. Somebody says it's zontuli. That that is zontuli. And the soup is called manpower. Say manpower. I'm sure a lot of women here have prepared soups, but you have never prepared manpower before. This is a journalist who came there to try the food. Now, when we go to the next slide. Just watch his face. Go to the next one after he had tasted the soup. Let's go to the next one. You see his face reaction. Yes, go, go to the next one. <laughs> Cameraman, please go down so that you don't. Cameraman, go all the way down, please. Oh, go back, go back. Yes, right there. Now, the man, he has tasted manpower. Can you see his expression? And people had to live with this manpower for years. When prison ministry was making the presentation, one of the essential commodities, I use the word essential. How many of you remember the 70s when we had to keep for soup? Yeah. It was called essential commodities. <laughs> In his own prison, soap is an essential commodity. Okay. There are people there 
who if churches don't come and donate, if prison ministry does not come, they buy for their soul. And I'm talking about years, not days, not weeks. Because if nobody is coming to visit you, how are you going to be able to get something? Somebody went to court. The dress that they were wearing were the same dress they were sentenced. And when you go to court and you are sentenced, you don't go home and pack your things. In Holland, when you are sentenced to imprisonment, they, they will call the prisons and ask them, do you have a bed? If they say no, they will tell you to go home. When they have bed, they will write to you to come and start your sentence. So when you get the letter, you pack your things, you go to the door, you say, I am here to serve my sentence. Ghana, when they sentence you, you are going straight to the town. So a person goes to court, is sentenced straight to the town. There are no uniforms for the inmates. So the same shirt and trousers you've got there with is the only one you're going to wear till maybe somebody comes to visit you. So imagine somebody who doesn't have any visitors. This person will have to wear the same dress throughout all the time that he's spending there. The dresses get worn out. So when churches are kind enough, and you know, churches, the majority of the members are women. So when they say donation, it's the women that bring their dresses more. So when they come to donate, half of the clothing are women clothing. And then you see John become Joanna. Because they have to wear the women's dress, whether you like it or not. Hallelujah. That's how bad the situation is. Today we can laugh about it. There are many innocent people in prison. Let me tell you a quick story. A gentleman was brought into the prison and he was crying. So one of the boys came and called me that I should come and minister to this man. When I went there, I asked him, why is he crying? He said that somebody came to his shop at Tutu and said he's traveling, but he wants to just visit nature's hall. Can he put his bag here and go? And he said, okay, he allowed the man. After about 30 minutes, two plain clothes police officers came into the shop and demanded to search the bag. When they opened the bag, it was we of some tower. They said, who does this bag belong to? So somebody just left it. The owner never came back. They sentenced the shop owner 10 years. So you see, everybody is a potential prisoner. Anything can just happen. There was another case that I met in James Ford. Somebody was sitting in front of his house at Jamestown. Another person comes to say that he wants to fight with him. The one who wants to fight with the one that is sitting down is very short like me. And the one he wants to beat is a very tall man. So the man said, Wait, let me get up so you can see my height and see if you want to still fight me. When the one sitting down got up, the one who wants to fight went back. There was a gutter. He fell and hit his head. He charged the one that stood up for murder case. He said, no way. He had pushed the man. Meanwhile, he had not pushed the man. Before the police would investigate, he had spent six years on remand. So please, let us remember our brothers and sisters in the prisons. Because it is not everybody who is in prison that is a hardened criminal. One day they brought a lecturer from Lego who had gone to court and misbehaved and he was charged with contempt. And they brought him there and come and see a lecturer crying. And the man too, he was not a a small man, he was a big structured person. So I had a boy called who kept coming to me and said, Come and see this man. He's crying like a baby. So we went. Anytime somebody's crying, I'm the one they come and call. When I went, I asked him, he says he had a problem with his wife. And uh, they are going through 
divorce and he went to the court and said something and the judge gave him two weeks. So who's to say, you are crying because of two weeks. Somebody is here for life and you are crying because of two weeks. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> two weeks. Even the female prisoners, they don't cry. The man say, I beg you, let me cry small. <laughs> A whole lecture from one of the faculties in the gun. Because he never imagined himself to be in prison. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me just run up very quickly so we can go. I'll give you the chance to ask questions. Finally, one day. Oh, you didn't say I say one day. I was transferred to Ankafo prisons and just before I left in Saum, I told the people that I am going and I believe the time for me to go home has come. Amen. When we got to Ankafo, there's a minister who comes from Elimina. His name was Reverend Kogna. He comes and now comes to share the word of God. Now Ankafo, I just had a new prison built there. And 2009, they were expecting His Excellency, the President, Jane Ford, to come and commission the prisons so that they can transfer those of us in the local to the maximum. That, that place is maximum. Now, the sound is medium. So I told God, I said, God, if medium is even bad, what would maximum prison be? So as for me, I am not going there. Please release me before anybody goes. Now the rest of the prisoners, now listen to this very carefully. The things that you say in your life will come to pass. Oh, somebody didn't say amen. Most of the prisoners who I met in Ankafu were praying that we'll be transferred quickly to the prison so that they can get beds before the others come. Because I want to show you how we sleep in the town. Oh, and most of the prisons that you're going forward. Go forward. Let's go forward. Go forward. Okay, so, so this is how we sleep. We are packed like sardine. Go to the next one, maybe we'll get a longer shot of that. We'll see more people. Yes, okay, better. This you can see this better. Now this is how people sleep in his home. Where somebody's head is, that is where somebody's legs are. Are you getting it? So if that person decides to release, you know what I'm talking about. It goes straight into your head. So if you don't learn sense here, you can't learn sense anywhere. Hallelujah. This is this is it. It is not a very pleasant situation. All right, that's enough. So everybody wanted to go and get a bed in the new prison. Then January fourth, two thousand and nine was a Sunday. Reverend Kwamna came, and I was doing the interpretation entry. So after his sermon, he says, "I brought you some books." But I'm waiting for you people to be taken to the new prison so that I will come and build a big library for you. And I said, Pastor said, they can show me, say, more and more prison for four. Or that they see life, they can see it. Then everybody started laughing. And I said, no, sir, me, so I'm prison, they see it. Me, go be hallelujah. This was on Sunday, Friday, I was released. So if you are making confessions, speak positive confessions. When people say, I am dead, because I am so dead, which I am hoping to do. Because if you keep saying, Charlie, things have, things have, it will hard for you. Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. I made this positive confessions. 
today you are going to hear some of the songs that I wrote. People will ask me, you are a condemned prisoner, why are you writing songs? It is because I had a vision. Bible says the vision is unto an appointed time. Though it happens, it shall surely happen. So whatever vision God has implanted into you, don't let it come to be a waste. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen. Amen. Today, the Lord has blessed me with a beautiful wife. You see, when I was in prison, my ex-wife came and said his family said you should come and divorce me. So she divorced me and went. But I knew that, you see, when God changes you, he changes the people around you. So I said, God, let me find a woman who will support the ministry that you have given to me. Today, my wife is here. Let's put our hands together for my wife. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And I also have able brother-in-laws, strong men. I have Uncle Ronnie, I mean Uncle Roger and Uncle Ronnie right there. And a beautiful sister of uh, my wife is a uh, sister. Akusia. Put your hands together for Sister Akusia right there. The family are so supportive. I couldn't ask for a better family than this. You see, when God changes your song, your dance will also change. Oh, amen. Oh. Tell somebody one day. If anybody is here and you are not married, I say one day you will marry. If you are here and you are trusting God for pregnancy, I say one day you will get pregnant. Don't be envious of anybody. If you want to go to a I say one day you will go to a Just trust in the Lord. Sakawa is not the solution. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I want you to support me to help the brothers that I left behind. I have some songs that I wrote. And you're going to be the first people to hear and see this. You can't find it in any shop. Hallelujah. Because it's something very special. And I have 14. The title of the album is G14. Say G14. G14. Now the 14 stands for the years that I spent in prison. And the songs are 14 on the CD. Normally, when we put an offering bowl here, and we say, donate something for the needy prisoners, I'm sure that your heart will be touched to give to these needy prisoners. But today, I brought something that I want everybody to have. Something you can take home with you. I'm going to ask the ministers to pray over this. And then after that, I will tell them what we will do. Hallelujah. So, I will please ask Prof and all the ministers to come and lay hands on this and uh, pray over this launch as we are about to launch it because we want to wrap up by 10 o'clock we'll, we'll be out of here there are 14 representing the number 14 so all the ministers I want you to come to the table and pray over this. The Heavenly Father, you gather here in your name for your glory. Do all things well. In your own time, allow yourself and give man to be in someone days for and in someone. You use that life powerful. You reveal your glory. Father, 
this evening, you've given him the privilege to share the testimony of what you have done in his life. Our Lord, you have released him from prison to freedom, from death into life, from bondage, Lord, into your kingdom. And we thank you for that. And now we have before us, Lord, what you have given him, Jiman, a talent to produce these apples of the experience in 14 years that he has produced to testify of you. We pray, Lord, that you will sanctify these instruments for you. Those who will receive them will be blessed. And those who will hear will be blessed. Heavenly Father, we also pray that the proceeds from this will be a blessing to many others who are there. And Lord, their testimony will glorify you and, and prevent many people also from going into prison. Lord, you have come to set us free. Use this as an instrument to set many free and to bring glory and worship to your holy name. And so we sanctify these apples in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.